In the previous two lectures, we described the Doppler effect using two different scenarios. In both of these scenarios, we described the movement of the sound source relative to a stationary observer. So we said in scenario one that if the source that creates the sound wave moves towards the stationary observer, then the wavelength will decrease and the frequency of the sound wave will increase. On the other hand, if the sound source moves away from the stationary observer, then the frequency will decrease because the wavelength will increase. So in both of these cases, we have the Doppler effect taking place because we have a change in frequency that is observed. Now we're going to talk about a slightly different scenario in which our source is assumed to be stationary while the observer is moving. So we have movement of observer relative to stationary sound source. So let's suppose we have the object, the source, that's creating our sound wave and it's stationary. It's found to be in this position. So it's creating sound waves and those sound waves are propagating outward in all possible directions. Now the observer is allowed to move either away or toward our stationary source. Now because the source is stationary, the wavelength of the sound waves produced by the source will remain constant. Now even though this wavelength will remain constant, there will be a change in frequency that takes place because there is a relative velocity, because there is relative motion between the observer and the sound waves. So if we want to calculate the new frequency, the observed frequency of the sound wave when this object, when the observer is moving, we have to use the following equation. So our new frequency f prime is equal to the relative velocity v prime divided by lambda, our wavelength. Now the relative velocity v prime is simply the sum of the velocity of our sound wave v sound plus our velocity of the observer. Now if this velocity, if our observer is moving away from our sound waves, that means that this will be a negative. But if the observer is moving towards our sound waves, then this will be positive. So let's suppose that this is positive and that our object, our observer, is moving towards the sound wave. So, because the velocity of the sound wave remains constant, because it depends on the medium, then V sound is equal to the product of lambda times F, where lambda is this wavelength, and this F is the frequency, is the original frequency if these two objects are stationary. So we can rearrange this equation and solve for lambda. Lambda is equal to V sound, velocity of the sound wave, divided by the frequency. So we can take this equation and we can plug in this lambda into this denominator. So F prime is equal to the sum, our relative velocity, divided by V sound divided by F. So this frequency goes on top, we rearrange, and we find the following formula. F prime is equal to V sound plus V observer, the relative velocity, divided by V sound, multiplied by the original frequency. So, if we divide V sound by V sound and V observer by V sound, we get the following result. The new frequency F prime is equal to the product of the old frequency and 1 plus V observer divided by V sound.
So this equation, which is shown here, is for when the observer moves towards the stationary source. But if the velocity is in the opposite direction, if our observer moves away from the sound waves and the sound source, then this becomes negative and this becomes negative. So we have the following equation. So one equation is for when the observer is moving towards the stationary sound source and the second equation is for when the observer is moving away from the stationary sound source. The difference lies in the following signs. One is positive and one is negative. Now, let's look at the following example. An ambulance siren that is stationary emits a sound wave with a frequency of 1200 hertz. Calculate the new frequency you would hear if the car is stationary and you are a moving away from the stationary source with a velocity of 30 meters per second and b moving towards our stationary sound source with a velocity of 30 meters per second. So in part A, we want to use formula 2 and in part B, we want to use formula 1. So, our velocity of the observer is 30 meters per second. Our velocity of the sound is simply, well, let's suppose it's 331 meters per second. So we have 1 minus 30 divided by 331 multiplied by the original frequency f of 1200 hertz, and that gives us 1091 hertz. So that's slightly less than the original frequency. Now in part b, if we plug in our values and use this formula, formula, we see that the new frequency is 1309 hertz. So once again, the Doppler effect will be observed not only when there's movement of the sound source, but also when there's movement of the observer relative to a stationary sound source.